Hello and welcome back to Kitty Talks Dogs. Today we have with us Pippa and Pippa is a poodle groomed in Asian style. So if you are interested to see how to groom a poodle in Asian style, keep on watching. Pippa is born in 2017 and is an adoption dog. After her adoption, she felt immediately at home because she has five doggy friends. Pippa loves to swim, play with toys and tug on toys. Pippa is owned by Lise Heens, which is a groomer and the grooming shop is called Ruffles. As you can see, Pippa is very friendly and very excited to be with us. This video is divided in the different chapters like washing, drying, scissoring or finishing or much more. If you would like to see a certain chapter, you can scroll down below and just click on the chapter which is interesting for you. If you see products and you're interested in having more information, there's a link down below. Just scroll down and you can click and have more information or you can even buy it if you like. And let's start with clipping the nails. Today we are using the nail grinder, the comfort nail cutter and the nail fix powder. And we are first going to cut a little bit of the nails, not too short. Uh, we are very lucky because here we see the nail the where the blood is, so we can just see where it is. And we just, with the nail grinder, we grind away the sharp edges so the nail is nicely rounded off. So when the dog jumps on us, we have no scratches. The nail grinder is very easy to use. Here you see the nail grinder in use with the nail cap on it. The nail cap has a little hole inside and if you use the nail cap it protects the long hair from like entering in the nail grinder and turning around so it's very good for using on dogs with a bit of longer hair it's very easy you just put the nail where the hole is and you can still twist the nail grinder around the nail to make the nail as round as possible when you accidentally cut the nail too short, just simply take a tissue and hold it against the nail so the blood will be absorbed by the paper. And then your quick fix, get it very close to you. And as soon as you take away the paper, take your quick fix powder and put the nail into the little pot. Let go and push your thumb against to the powder which is sticking on the nail. By doing that, you will stop the bleeding immediately. And here you see on the drawing, the pads actually have like a flat side because dogs are walking on the floor all the time on a flat area. If you follow the flat area, you will never go too short. Here on the drawing, you see if you follow the flat area, you will not be able to cut in the quick and the quick is where the blood is where you have the vein and just follow with your nail clipper the flat area and cut off the nails and now let's do some ear cleaning today i'm going to use first of all the ear powder and then the ear care together with the big q-tips and here for easy pulling and also for the hygiene we are using the grippy fingers the grippy fingers are like a latex rubber and you have if you put them on very much grip on the hair and it's just very easy to take off the hair with the grippy fingers to avoid infections we like to have an airy ear that's why around the ear we take as much as possible hair away and here you see is not only pulling the hair from the inside but also around the ear 
for the hairs we can't get anymore with our fingers we are today using the safety ear forceps the safety ear forceps are like very thick and very easy to use and because they are so thick you have less chance of like nipping the skin and you can really go very deep and also because they have such a thick head you can take a lot of hair out at once and now you see us using the ear care liquid. I like to wait like 30 seconds to leave the active ingredients do their job and dissolve all the dirt and the wax. To soothe the ear, you see us here using the ear care cream because people had a lot of hair inside the ear and we had to pull this all out. People's ear are not really red, but to soothe the skin, we did use the ear care cream. Let's do some prepping work. Here we got, are going to use the experto clipper to clip between the pads. And here you see us working between the pads. It's very easy with this clipper, which has a very good blade. The blade has like very narrow teeth and they are very rounded and it's very easy to go in between the pads. Pippa is being very behaving very well. And here you see the second foot. I like the Experto so very much because it's first of all very light. So when you are working, you don't really feel your clipper in your hands. You can hold it with the tips of your fingers. So it's not too big for small hands. It's not very vibrating. So the dogs are calm when you are using it. And last of all, it's also not very noisy. So when you go around the faces and around the ears, the dogs let you shave their very extreme sensitive parts with no problem. And now let's do some bathing. Today we are using the Pure Coat. The Pure Coat is a shampoo for degreasing. We are using the Rise and Shine shampoo. The Rise and Shine shampoo is a shampoo for making the hair go up, it's rising. So it's like a shampoo that gives volume. And we also have the conditioner Rise and Shine, which is also special for coats who need volume. Here you see us preparing the pure coat. And we first put the water in because otherwise we have too much foam. And the line says 1 to 35 and we follow that line and then here you see us putting the pure coat in until the fill line. If you don't want to use a mixing bottle it's very easy you can just use the cap of the shampoo and use one cap of shampoo and 35 caps of water but you can also weigh you can also weigh the shampoo and in this case you can for example use 10 grams of shampoo and put 350 grams of water and then you have also the perfect mixed shampoo. And here you see us wetting pipa and here you see us applying the shampoo with the mixing bottle. As you can see, you immediately have a nice foaming shampoo and you have a nice lather. And here you see us washing the head and massaging the ears just to make sure they are totally squeaky clean. We always wash a second time. Here you see us preparing the Rise and Shine shampoo, which is also concentrated 1 to 35. So here we followed the line on the mixing bottle where it says 1 to 35 and we filled it with water. And then we at last put the shampoo in and the shampoo we fill until the fill line. 
And here you see us mixing a little bit. And here you see us applying the shampoo. In our Showtech Plus line, we have created a special color for all the products which have volume. And the volume color is purple. So everything you see from Showtech Plus and it's like in a purple color, it's going to be for giving volume. One of the things we usually do is we wash the head the last part because you never know there might be some shampoo going in the eyes so the head is the last part and also the first part we rinse and here you see us rinsing and continuously we are like pushing out the shampoo and massaging and we need to rinse until all the shampoo is definitely out of there so we have no shampoo residue. Here you see us preparing the Rise and Shine conditioner and we are for this kind of coat we are just preparing a half a liter of water and we are putting two teaspoons in. We are shaking the bottle well so the conditioner is well dissolved you can see like the white uh, milky uh, product on the coat but don't be afraid the product won't make the hair softer uh, in the contrast the the conditioner is very well made to nurture the coat and the skin and it won't make the hair softer or fall down it will and the opposite it will give volume to the coat And here you see us massaging the product in the coat. There's a saying about squeaky clean. Well, to know when you are finished rinsing out the conditioner, you like have to feel the squeak and then you can stop rinsing. What's the squeak? Normally when you have like a conditioner in the coat you like slide over the coat and you like slide gently over the coat when there's no more conditioner you won't slide anymore but your hand will just stop and when you feel that that's when the conditioner is all rinsed out and that's when you are finished rinsing it's time for some drying here you see kitty using the dry mate the dry mate is very fun in use it's like a towel but you can reuse it much easier because it absorbs a whole pile of water and you can squeeze the water out and just start drying again here you see us using the blaster and the blaster is special to blow away most of the water it's also so powerful at the end of the nozzle which is very small the air is so compressed it will blow open all the coat and because of that you will gain a lot of time because when you have to do this with a hand dryer you will have the same result but it will take a long time if you have a water blaster the water will just disappear and because of the power of the air you will open the coat very much quicker and you won't have to do so much drying with the brush and automatically you will end up with a dog with a lot of volume i'm very happy kitty ponet is helping me to wash pipa and here you see her like going over the coat she is just holding the dryer about 10 centimeters away like this from the skin and she is going in little round movements and you see this coat like opening and drying mm -hmm. 
here you see the products we are going to use for finishing with the dryer. If Pippa has some curls left, all the curls are going to disappear with the show coat slicker. And the show coat slicker has very small pins, they're very flexible, but the trick is the angulation. And with the angulation as the show coat slicker, you will be able like to pull the hairs with the warm air together, all the curls and the wavy coat will disappear and we will be able to straighten completely the coat. You need a straight coat for perfect scissoring. Here you see us using the quick fix spray. We are like spraying the quick fix spray a little bit on pipa and this will make the sec the finishing touches very easy with the dryer. And here you see us like pulling the hairs and making sure all the curls have disappeared. As you can see, you, the coat is like opening everywhere and it's very easy to brush out. Here you see us using the triangle brush for taking out under the armpits all the curls and this little brush is like very easy to use. And here you see us like checking our work with the comb and here you see how fluffy the coat is. No more curls and ready for scissoring. And here you see a pipa which is ready for the next step. Now let's do some clipping. Here you see Pippa being very nice to me. And let's do some clipping with a Heinecker clipper. Here you see me using the 4F. The 4F is like one centimeter long and it's very nice finishing. It's like a teddy bear look. But the trick is when you want to use a blade which is long, the best thing is always to wash and dry the dogs in advance. Then you will just pass through the hair and it will shave extremely beautiful. Because this blade is quite long, the result is like one centimeter. It's not possible to just pass one time on the skin and think it's going to be totally finished. You have to pass like a few times. Eventually, depending on which coat you are having, sometimes you can like gently brush over the coat and then pass again with the clipper and then you will have a very nice result. Also, another thing it's important to know how to shave. We actually, when you have your arm, we actually with the flat side of the blade we go over the coat so we don't clip like this we like go over the coat flat and we don't push very much and we just go over round and round and round the coat when you have a bigger dog with a bigger surface you can always use the wider blades i'm i like the wider blades very much because then you just pass one time and you just have a bigger surface and you win time so small jobs a normal blade big jobs big blades here you see me shaving the neck i'm just gonna shave and shave and here you see me already shaving the back a bit I'm like using the spine as one line and then next to the spine I'm not going to go in the same horizontal direction but I'm like diagonally going down and I'm like gently and bit by bit shaving and gently following the skin with the flat surface of the blade and here you see me lifting up the front legs and gently going 
against the direction of the coat. I'm only using half of the blade to not create a line and to have a soft difference between the short and the long. And here again, you see me using the clipper or the blade with the direction of the coat on the neck and on the shoulders. So when I'm shaving, I'm not really stopping where the shoulders are. I'm just like gently going over. If you stop, you will have a very direct line, but I'm like continuing to shave a bit, even though I'm not pushing on the blade and that's creating already a little line or a little style at the legs or at the shoulders. And here you see me repeating and going over and over the coat again. And here now below the tail, also I'm already making the line. And now I'm gently brushing the coat with the Yento show coat slicker. And as you can see here, there's little, little, little hairs coming off again after I've been brushing. And now you see the back with a nice finish. And it's time to do some scissoring. Today I'm going to use the Yento scissors. And the small one is the sparkle scissors in the purple color. I like to use that for little parts at little feet. I'm going to use the Yento Cobra blender. I'm going to use the Yento Ergoline 15 centimeters also for the small jobs. And for the finishing, I'm going to use the Utsumi uh, Yo, which is uh, the Yo 80. And sometimes I'm going to use a scissor which is coming very soon. It's the Yento Ergoline Chunker with 18 teeth. And it's very new and it's very good. So here you see me using the Yento scissoring comb. And the scissoring comb is a very special comb with very fine teeth and the teeth are very close to each other and it just makes the hair very, very fluffy. And if they're after the dog has paused for 15 minutes or 20 minutes or gone out, sometimes like the hair is like shrimping in it and you create like curls again. So just before scissoring, you use the comb. It's a combi comb. Just first you comb with the white side and then you can like pull out all the hairs, all the curls and the hair will be extra fluffy. And then when you are finished, you can use the fine side. And then actually the coat is like very straight and it's called the scissoring comb because when you are scissoring, and the hairs are like extremely straight you scissor and you have like a fantastic good finish on the on the coat so this is why before we start scissoring we are using the yento scissoring comb to like make sure the coat is totally straight and here you see me scissoring the front feet i'm holding the feet and just going around the feet at the nails we go very 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 short because we would like to have the front feet as straight as possible so we comb all the hairs down and we scissor in front of the nails and we go as short as possible just above and around the nails and after that we do the shoulder and we touch the shoulder and we make sure where the front feet lift it's here and this part needs also to be as short as possible and then as part three we connect the shoulder with the front nails which are all very short and we make a very straight vertical line so here you see me scissoring and i'm just 
thinking straight, 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 as straight as possible. And when the dogs are a little jumpy and a little nervous, as you can see here, you can just take one leg and that way you can just work on the leg which is on the floor or on the table and just go as straight as possible. And here you see me like combing and brushing and thinking straight, straight down and like continuing bit by bit, looking at it from all angles possible and just scissoring and combing and repeating until we are very happy with a straight line. The best way is when you can is have a scissor which the blade is quite long because imagine you have a very tiny scissor and you have to make a straight line each time you have to like open and close the scissor and open and close the scissor because you have a tiny blade. The longer the blade, the easier it is to make a straight line down. So here, that's why I've chosen to use the 20 centimeter Utsumi. And here you see me working on the shoulders. And here I'm just scissoring and combing all the hair nicely upwards and then repeating. Here, because it's very difficult, Pippa has like a very light apricot hair and it's difficult to see the points. So we've put on the table's light and we see a better contrast. When you see the legs from the side, the Asian style is not totally straight, but if you see it, the legs from the side, the legs can go like uh, wider at the bottom than it is on the top. So you don't have to be afraid to go short at the shoulders and the more down you go, the, more, the wider the feet are. Here you see me lifting his uh, left leg again and here I'm just scissoring away. I'm just having fun. And here you see me using the Ergoline 18 centimeter chunker because Pippa is like shivering very much and it's very easy when you have this situation where the dog is constantly moving. When you use a chunker and the dog is moving, you, you will have a softer finish and you have a better chance uh, in making a better finish when the dogs are like moving too much or when you have to like search for a line or for the angulation. The chunkers are a very easy tool to help you in these situations. Let's have a drink. And let's continue scissoring. You don't have to be afraid of lifting up the paws and just going underneath, on the back, on the front, on the chest and just making sure underneath it's also nice and clean. Here I'm just showing how we are combing the coat so all the hairs are like sticking out and being straight for scissoring. It's very easy, just put in the comb and just take out the comb again, making the hairs straight and then doing the same thing a bit higher. Putting in the comb again, turning the comb and like pulling the hairs straight and then from the bottom to the top. And now you can totally see where the points are that need scissoring. And that's how we get to a very good finish by repeating and scissoring and combing all the hair straight again and scissoring the points. And now let's do the scissoring of the head. I will start by going like very short at the eyes 
I'm like taking a line from the eye to the ear and above that line I'm going short. I'm like holding the scissors diagonal and I'm like looking from the side so I would like to see when the dog is like looking like this I would like to see his eyes so there's no hair like in front of the eyes. Now I'm like combing all the moustache hair to the back and also like cutting that hair. And here I'm following the moustache. And as I didn't like it, I took the clipper and went a bit further with the clipper. And here I'm combing all the hairs in all the kind of directions. And just making sure when you comb the front of the hairs towards the eyes, there's a nice little bevel here. And when you comb all the hairs from the moustache and the face towards the eyes, that there's no hairs in front of the eyes. So here you see me scissoring the moustache. And scissoring away. And now you see me drying the moustache because it was all wet. He's like sweating a bit and he's like licking a bit and it's just much easier when the coat is dry. Because I couldn't get it as clean as I wanted, I decided to take the Experto and go slightly shorter in the face. So here you see me clipping again. And now I will have a very nice difference between the moustache and the face. And also around the ears, I will make sure it's all very nice, short and clean. And now just clean up the neck. So there's no big difference and there's not a line here. And it's all nice and natural. Et voilà. And now again with a dry coat, we are like combing all the hair to the front and scissoring like we have to be very careful for the nose. We are going like the side of the nose and we are like never crossing with our scissor over the nose because it's like extremely sensitive and extremely dangerous. So I have like something with my scissor always going around the nose, never, never over the nose. You never know, you might, you know, accidentally touch the nose with the blade and the nose will start bleeding immediately. So here, just going over the nose, making sure everything is nice and rounded. Here you see me with my two fingers holding the hair up and also making short, sure it's nice and rounded. Here again around the eyes. And we have two parts of the head. The first part is short 
and the other part will just be staying long and the other part will be at the same length as the ears. Now we are just doing the neck. There's many different kinds of Asian style grooming out there. There's many books, there's also many workshops all around the world. And if you don't have the opportunity to find books, if you just type in Google Asian style poodle grooming or Asian style Yorkie grooming or Asian fusion or whatever, you will see a lot of examples to choose from. And here you see me starting the back legs. I'm again using the sparkle series to do the feet. And I'm just going around and around the pads. And again, where the nails are, the front part is like very short. And then at the same line as the pads, I make everything behind the legs very short. And here you see me scissoring his angulation. I'm going extremely short there. Actually, I'm scissoring extremely short where the fold is here. It's actually very short. And then above, I'm going from where it's extremely short. I'm like rounding off a little bit towards the tail and at the tail it's again very very short and because it's very short and I'm like diagonally also scissoring towards the groin and there it's the same shortness and it's actually also the same line And I'm also much combing and scissoring and combing and scissoring and repeating. Because sometimes it's very difficult to see or to scissor the hair where you have to. If you can't do it from one side, we have to find another way. So that's why I lifted his left back leg to scissor the inside of his right back leg. And here again, I'm just continuing and I'm scissoring and combing. Also, it's very good once you are scissoring and you are constantly looking to style. It's good to step back and to see the, what you are doing from like a meter or even two meters away and then you can continue styling again. For me, the most important is when you are styling is the line and not the finishing. So I will first like style the angulation and the groin and I will first make sure everything is in place and it's a stylized leg and then I will finish and I will make it nice. But first, the most important thing is always the line and then the finishing. Here you see me using the blender again. And here I'm like holding the tail and making sure around the tail it's also all very natural. And here again you see like the angulation I'm using and because the line I have in the back also we need to try to create the same angulation in the front. So I'm going the same line and creating the front here. Here now you see the front uh, and the back of the left back foot and the same having the same line now. And now I can finish more to the bottom.
and here now you see me scissoring the tail. I've just combed the tail and all the hair which is coming over the tail itself I twisted it, I held the tail in my between my fingers so I can't cut the tail and I cut off the extra hair. And now I'm just rounding, rounding off, making sure it's all natural. And now I'm just going to finish the head. Just making sure all is correct and all is nice. And now let's do some styling at the head. Today I'm going to use the Texture It powder, which is a texturizing powder, which is very light and it's very different than hairspray. You just have to put it inside the coat and it will make sure that the coat is like voluminous and it will texturize it. It will give the hair body and it's very very easy in use and it won't be sticky but it will just be very standing up you just have to like line brush a bit and because of the applicator with the long metal nozzle you can just applicate the powder inside the dog's coat and the coat will nicely stand up and stay standing up. You can use it on all kinds of breeds. You can use it especially on terriers, but also on poodles. And here you see me using a little hairspray for the tips and for the finishing. And now we just have to join the top knot with the ears. And here you see a finished pipa before and after. I'm very thankful I was able to groom pipa. I enjoyed it very much. And if you liked this video, uh, you can always subscribe and you can even hit the notification bell. And as soon as we have a new video online, we can notify you. If you have any questions about this video or ideas for future videos, don't ever hesitate to tell us down below or even on social media. You're very welcome and I will answer you as soon as possible. Thank you for watching and see you next time.